chair. You sit on that chair. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Rufus. Good boy. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Um, it's been a little while since um, I have recorded. I was supposed to record in November, but that didn't happen. Um, my name is Emma. I'm coming to you from Northern Ireland and I am the dyer behind Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company. So, got the stove on. It was very cold in here. I've got my cup of tea. Today I'm drinking um, a Christmas tea by a company called Tugboat. So my friend gave it to me for a Christmas present last year. So I'm drinking it now. It's really good. It's like a fruit infusion. And I'm drinking it out of a Laura Boyd ceramics mug. She's one of my favorite potters. Um, I had some of her mugs in the shop there in November, but, um, the mugs are sold out. I've got some tea light holders, but this was from one of my clubs last year. I think it was my Solstice or Equinox Club. So I absolutely love this mug. It's so nice. I feel like I should have kept one from every club that I did, but maybe that would have been excessive. Um, I've got quite a lot of things to show you actually, to be honest today. Um, a few FOs, a few works in progress, and yeah enjoy so before we go any further i'm going to put this and there's stick in the fire maybe two there we go all right let's begin um i'll start with finished objects and i should start with this one this is a hot water bottle for those of you who don't know because i got when i put out about hot water bottles on instagram i must have got 200 messages from people saying if they used them if they knew what they were if they didn't know if they used them in their country or not and let me tell you a lot of people had never heard of them and um, did not know what they were for or had said their great granny might have used one when they went to their house or something um, so that was a little bit intense, <laughs> had a lot of messages to reply to. So this, uh, hot water bottle, you fill it with hot water and you can take it to bed or just sit with it or whatever. The cover helps to keep the heat in and keep it warm for longer. And obviously it is much more aesthetically pleasing than what I had before, which was a pink leopard print situation, which was not so nice. So I've been planning to make one of these for maybe three years and I hadn't done it. So I just thought, you know what, now is the time. This is called Cozy Bottle, C-O-Z-Y Bottle, and it's patterned by Hinke on Ravelry's free pattern. And to make it, I used two different yarns. I used for the charcoal grey, brown, black. I used my Swart Blues limited edition yarn. And for the color work section, I used um, Let Lopey, just scraps and leftovers that I had. And um, you start by doing Judy's Magic Cast On, which I've never done. And I was just amazed at how it turned out because it's completely seamless. And the color work was really addictive. It knitted up really fast. I knitted this probably in about a week um, and it's just very Moorish when you start, you don't want to stop. When I was knitting this, <clears throat> I'd seen a thing on Instagram about colour dominance and my colour work, I knit with um, two colours kind of over, Rufus is just sitting there. <laughs> two colours over one finger and it said for your dominant colour it should always be on the top. I wasn't sure what my domin dominant colour should be so I think I made the domin dominant colour the dark one but I think maybe I should have made it the light one. Um, however I think it's turned out really nicely and um, for the this warp I held it double to meet the same gauge. 
I did not gauge swatch. Very naughty. And it turned out perfect. So I'm really pleased about that. Um, usually I'm a very, well, I am a very loose knitter, but it seems to be with some Scandinavian patterns and designers that my gauges seems to be more correct with their patterns than with other designers. So I don't know if the way I hold my yarn is more similar tension wise to continental knitting. Anyway, this is a beautiful make and if, um, if you are thinking about knitting one, I would go for it. It's just feels very extra, as they say these days, very extra and very really nice to take it to bed with me. So I'm really, really pleased with how that turned out. I didn't block it um, because I just thought I just couldn't be bothered. So it's totally fine. So that's finished object number one. Finish object number two, I cannot find. So I'm going to put a photo here for you. Um, so I'll just tell you about it. I'll just talk you through it. Um, so it's a pattern by Petite Knit. It is the November Balaclava um, Mini, I think. Um, I knitted it for my little girl. Uh, and I knitted it in hand spun. Um, I have not knit a lot of things in my own or anybody else's hand spun. So this was really off the cuff, really just a random little knit. I just thought she needed some for her head. Again, I didn't gauge watch just because. I'm just gonna sit with me. I don't think there's enough room for the both of us. So I'm really glad I checked there because um, uh, this wasn't recorded, so <laughs> here we go again. So yes, I knitted the November Balaclava Mini in um, my friend Kim's hand spun, which I bought um, at a market, um, when she used to be Art Equals Happy, um, which was about 10 plus years ago. I bought it when I was a student. And um, I found it in my deep stash. Uh, along with some of my own hands from. Now, I did not gauge swatch for this project. Um, so I actually knitted one before this one that's finished and it was far too big. So I set it aside and started this secondary one in secondary, sec, second. I started the second one um, at a smaller gauge and um, it turned out really nicely um, but because I didn't gauge watch it turned out too big um, so I was happy with everything about it apart from the size <laughs> it'll fit next year um, but yeah it turned out really nicely it's a really nice pattern and it was really nice to use hand spun and I would definitely consider after knitting the balaclava mini um, I would definitely consider, oh, sorry, Rufus. Oh, I don't think there's room for both of us here. Um, I would definitely consider knitting a sweater in my hand spun, although um, I don't really have enough hand spun to knit a sweater in, but um, do you want to go up in that seat, Rufus? You go up in this seat, come on, come on, come on. Good boy. can't leave this seat for a minute. <laughs> so yes, it's on my radar to at some point knit a sweater in my hands bun. And um, I look forward to doing that. I need to get better at my spinning or at least do more of it. I haven't done much spinning in quite some time. This was in my deep stash as well. I think this is Blue Face Lester that I bought at the Hand Weavers Gallery and Studio, I think it's called, in London when I was a student there. Um, so that is my second finished object. Um, as for the sweater that I'd like to knit in this, I think I would like something that comes up a little bit here, not turtleneck, just ribbed, drop shoulder, boxy, just something really cozy. So 
that's on my radar. I had the back of my mind to do that at some point. So that is my second finished object. <laughs> Next, okay, third finished object is a pair of Christmas socks. Um, I knitted these out of um, my natural sock yarn, but I held it double. Just so it would go a little bit quicker. I cast on, I think, 48 stitches using, I think it was a 2.5 millimeter needle. So I'm getting a good tight gauge with that. For the heel, I just used some leftover. I think it's the colorway is Jasmine. And for the toe, again, just some leftover color that I had made a sample of a while ago. I haven't woven in the ends yet, as you can see, but I will do that soon because I'd like to wear these very shortly. And I think the colours um, turned out really nice on these, so I don't know if you can see that. All the little different kind of speckly, variegated tones. And this is all naturally dyed, so like, it's quite cool how it turns out so nicely. Um, this colour is like quite a lot of work as well, so really proud of how these turned out. Um, I didn't use a pattern, I don't really, I rarely use a pattern for socks. Um, especially for this because I feel like with natural sock yarns you have to um, A get the correct gauge so you get good wear. That will require different people to cast on different amounts of stitches and which obviously you can write in a pattern but for me I like to have a formula in my head so that I know okay I like to cast on this many. So this was kind of an experiment in finding out the formula for basically what is a DK weight sock. Um, so I know now if I'm knitting with my own natural sock yarn and I hold it double, I cast on 48 stitches using a 2.5 millimeter needle. And I always, with my natural sock yarns, I always knit them longer than I need, at least a centimeter, ideally one and a half to two, because I've noticed with my feet anyway, I felt the foot at the heel a little bit and that tends to make the foot shorter, which will then put pressure on the toe and you'll wear a hole in the toe. So I knit them longer. So when they felt they're the correct size. Um, I do have very sweaty feet though. Not everyone will. So this is my third finished object. Now I think it is possibly time for works of progress. I think it's still recording. I forgot to say what I'm wearing. This is my Rodari. It's a pattern by, I'm gonna say this wrong, so apologies in advance. Vedis Jilson Dottier. <laughs> Terrible. Um, my Icelandic is very bad. I'm only joking, I don't speak any Icelandic. <laughs> um, and I knitted it in that lobby. Okay, so on to works in progress and a little sip of tea. This is getting quite warm. Probably should move away, but it's it's very nice. Okay. <clears throat> first things first, where do we start? Um, I think the last time I podcast, I had cast on a Michaela shawl in two colors. Well, I didn't get very far with that before I decided that I wanted a one colour version and that it would suit me better. So since then, I have knitted quite a bit on this. Um, I pick it up every now and again. I don't do it consistently. Um, this is a pattern by Vanessa Pelisa. You can find it on Ravelry or her website, I believe. Uh, this is knitted in my, as you can see, it hasn't been out of the bag in a while. This is um, being knitted in my Hearth DK yarn, which is um, a blend of Blueface Leicester and Jacob 50-50. And it's DK weight, so it's 240 metres per 100 grams. And I think it takes two skeins maybe of this. I can't remember. Maybe it's three. I think it might be two though. And um, it's just loads of lovely garter um, with some areas of fisherman's rib. This will be a thing, by the way, in this podcast. I'm doing a lot of fisherman's rib. And um, I think that's why I've stalled a little bit in this because 
I have so many other fishermen's rib. For example, the November Balaclava Mini was fisherman's rib, and my first sweater is also fisherman's rib. So, um, yeah, I was procrastinating a little bit on that. So I don't even think I'm halfway, but I think it's going to be a really nice cozy shawl when I get it finished. Um, it's a lovely pattern and it was actually designed in my yarn. So that's really cool. Needle size is just as recommended in the pattern, I think four millimeter. So it's looking good. My aim is to maybe, I don't really have an aim for this. It'd be nice to finish it like before the end of the winter, but I'm not going to put any pressure on myself to do that. Sometimes the best things you get are those ones that are just off the cuff and just, I don't know, sometimes they just turn out really good. This uh, is my next work in progress, which is oh, so close to being finished, but I, this is my hive sweater, which I'm knitting in my, now I get this right, Hebridean and Black Welsh Mountain yarn. So it's turning out really nicely, nicely, nicely. <laughs> um, this is a pattern by Hive Knits and the pattern is called The First Swear. I think this is the first swear she has designed. And it's, at, at the start I was like, oh my goodness, this pattern has like 30 pages. And then once I started knitting it, knitting it the pattern, I was like, this is so great. Like everything I need to know is in the pattern. I need to look no further. So um, that has been so nice. This has not been out of the bag in a little while because I had to set it aside because I was, because of fisherman's rib, like sometimes it can grow, but because I'm using a woolen spun yarn, I'm finding that it's not grown at all. And um, I thought I thought I was at the right length. So I've actually knit it both cuffs, but I haven't cast them off because I was like, I'm going to try it on. When I tried it on, I was like, this is too short. So I probably need to knit like another, like about this much longer on each sleeve because with the balloon sleeve, you kind of want the balloon to hang down over the cuff a little bit just to get that balloon look rather than it being like stretched. So I'm gonna have to rip out both cuffs, knit about, I would say about two to three inches and then re-knit the cuff. Um, Maybe I'll try it on quickly here for you, just so you can see what I mean. So you see what I mean? Like this, this part needs to be down here. And then, yeah, because I want this to come over like this, so it's more balloony looking. As a general rule, I don't like my sweaters, the arms on them to be too long, but I just feel like that look does not work with a three quarter length sleeve. It's just ridiculous looking. I look like a clown or something. So I need to just knit this longer. It's not working as it is and it's very close to being finished. So um, I'd say once I get a little bit further on with a couple of my other projects, I'll just finish this off and then I can wear it this winter. Um, yes, the yarn for this is sold out now. It's my limited edition. So as I said before, it's wool and spun, which is different to my other bases. Um, so it's quite springy and bouncy and vol voluminous. <laughs> Um, so if you wanted to knit this in my yarn, I don't have that, but I have similar yarns coming in the next few months. And I also have my Causeway yarn in the shop at the moment. And you could also knit it in my Heart DK if you wanted to. So this is what this looks like currently. I'm gonna take it off again. Just had to move my camera slightly there because then, um, the light was coming in so brightly. So yes, the the yarn for that, um, similar things I have coming up. Um, all of my limited edition yarns, the fibre comes from Northern Ireland and um, they're spun in Wales. So it's all from local farms around me, which is really cool. So it's um, totally traceable, which I love. And it's all breed specific. So you'll know exactly this batch is this, this breed or um, maybe a blend of two farms yarn, two farms fiber. I can't talk to them. Anyway, enough about that. Next project. Already done that one. 
I have finally cast on my Ola yoke. This has been a long time coming. I think I showed you my swatch possibly in the last episode. If not, I'm going to pop in a video of it here. So I'm knitting the Ola yoke, which is patterned by Ella Gordon in my Cosway yarn. I am inverting the original colour work by doing um, a light colour, this undyed colour for the main colour, and then I'm doing a range of autumnal pinks and yellows for the yoke. Um, the yarn I'm using, the Cosway yarn, is a bit thicker than the original yarn in the pattern, so I had to do a bit of jiggery pokery with the gauge. Um, I watched a very helpful video by um, Selma from Little Big Knits. She had an episode about changing your gauge and figuring that out. So I can't remember exactly what I did now as it was a while ago, but I remember I watched the podcast and I did what she said. That's my neighbor with his cars, oh dear. So the Cosway yarn has about, I think it's about 350 meters per 100 grams. I hope that noise is not too annoying. And <coughs> I cast on the smallest size normally I'd be somewhere in the middle range of sizes so that just shows you the difference that the gauge makes like quite a significant difference so if I'd have just not done a gauge watch for this it would have turned out really wrong and even at the start I was going is this too big but no I measured it against various squares that I have and it looks about right the pattern is supposed to have zero ease so no negative or positive ease but I want it a little bit because I just don't like things that are too clingy so um I figured that all out and then I cast on um my Ola yoke which you actually it's bottom up which is so it'll be a while before I actually get to the yoke and yeah so far I think it's looking good it'll be a nice lightweight sweater I only have maybe one other sweater that's in a four ply or maybe two sweaters that's in a four ply weight, four ply or finger and weight, depending on where you're from. Um, but soon I'll have the hive knits one and then I'll have the all the yoke. Um, I'm not a fastener, so this will probably take me until the end of the winter at least to finish, I would imagine. There's gonna be quite a lot of kind of boring knitting until I get to the fun bit. Which makes me think maybe I should do an all over colour work pattern because I obviously like doing that. Um, and the colours that I'm using for my yoke part, again, these are not all in stock in the shop, but there'll be similar things if you want to knit one along with me. There's blues, you could do a fade and blue one, or you could do an autumnal colour like me. So I think this is coral, this is gingerbread, cognac, I'm not sure, peony and mustard. And there's another colour here. I'm not sure what this one is, but basically these are the colours that I'm doing the yoke in. And like by themselves, like these colours maybe don't look that amazing, but together they look incredible. So like you'd look at that and go, oh, it just looks like a beige, like that's not very interesting. But when you put it with all of these, like it just works, like it, these colours need this colour for it to work. So I'm really pleased with my colour choices. And here, ah, yeah, this was in my bag. Here's just a little colour swatch that I did at the start to try and figure out, hopefully you can see that, to try and figure out um, what colours I was going to put together and in what order. So I'm pleased with that and I'm happy that I finally cast it on. So that is my second, third work in progress, third work in progress. And um, my next work in progress, I have two more actually. My next work in progress is one that I have just started. It is the Lizzie Pinafore by Gudrun Johnson. And I am using um, Murray Wallen's British Breeds, um, which I've never used before. It's a blend of uh, Blueface Leicester, Exmoor, uh, Wensleydale and Swartblues. And 
this is her little label here. Oops. So the Lizzie pinafore is um, like a miniature pinafore. It's like ribbed to here and then it's lace and colour work, which is really fun. Um, and I decided that I'd knit it for my wee girl. I'm not in any rush to finish this really um, because she's not walking yet. So I wouldn't want to put this on if she's just crawling around in it. So the colours I chose, I'm really pleased with these. I got these in Folklore Yarns in Belfast when I was there one day. These are my colours. So they come in really amazing colours. Hopefully you can see that. I'm just going to check this is still recording. And um, this colour here is Willow. I think this one is Russet and this one is... What's this one called? This one is called Chestnut. And I just thought, yeah, this go really gonna go really well together. And um, the original was knit in Jameson and Smith, I think. Two ply jumper weight. So this is the closest I could get. I had none nothing in my stash or in uh, the shop that was fine enough. So this is actually 25 gram ball and there's 85 meters per 25 grams so I can't add, th add that up but it's lighter than a finger in weight basically for sure I think it is anyway maybe I'm wrong about that um so I cast this on the other night I did not gauge watch naughty but I just thought, you know what, again, it's the same thing like this. I'm a loose knitter. The yarn is maybe a little bit thicker than um, what the pattern intended. And because she's older than one, I'm knitting the size, I think it's 12 to 18 months or like one to two. So I just thought, well, whatever size it turns out, it's going to fit her in a little while. So that's perfect. I'm in no rush. But it's a very Moorish pattern, so I'm anticipating probably flying through this. <laughs> I've got a little stitch marker from whoops, Chapel View Crafts, a little um, Christmas pudding. Oh, thanks, neighbour. Thanks for banging your car. Yes, we're done. So this had a cast on that I had never done before, uh, the German twisted cast on, and it honestly took me quite a long time to get my head around it but it creates a very beautiful cast on edge and um, very very nice and uh, I guess you need it for the stretch in this one so um, that it took me a whole night to cast on 140 stitches a whole night and a lot of YouTubing a lot of watching the same video over and over again and um, so that's two different cast ons the Judy's Magic cast on and the German uh, twist it castle that I did. Sorry about the banging. Um, yeah, so it's lace and colour work and then it's ribbed to the top. So I'm looking forward, I'm really enjoying this so far and I'm looking forward to knitting more on it. Um, colour work just totally entices me in. I don't know what it is about it, but I absolutely love it. Um, I love lace work as well and Maybe I'm at the stage in my knitting journey where I just, I need a bit of something more to keep me interested. Anyway, I better hurry up because we're losing light here. The next thing that I have swatched for is a vest. Now, I don't remember what the name of it is. I think it's my favourite sweater as the designer. It's like vest number something. And a while ago for my birthday, I had bought myself um, some Hello Stella yarn. This is her Cormo Domestic Wool, grown, milled and dyed in Ontario. And the colour is Shag Rug, which I love. Um, I love this colour. So, um, and it still has wee bits of like stuff in it, which I love as well. Um, you can, it's really like, you feel like where it comes from, which is so cool. Uh, it's 260 metres per 100 grams and it's 50-50 Corydale mohair. Um, so first off, 
I was like, right, I want to invest with this. I only got three schemes. Um, I rarely buy from overseas, so this felt like quite a big deal to me. <laughs> um, but I knew when it came, I was like, oh, I love this so much. But I look, I started looking through all the vest patterns and I just thought, there's, I'm not going to have enough yarn to knit what I want. And probably the easiest way for me to get more yarn is to add um a silk mohair now i've spoke about silk mo mohair before i don't i'm not always like i don't 100 percent love silk mohair but sometimes you have to like weigh up okay i need something that i want to wear i want to wear it often i need to like the color and i need to like the fabric as well as okay i want this yarn to be um as good as it can be when i'm purchase purchasing it so anyway, I did a wee bit of research online. I wanted to use Whistlebear's um, Weavering Bell, but they didn't have anything in the right colour. So I thought about um, emailing and asking them for a custom dye job, but I didn't know if they'd really do that for like two skeins. So um, I decided to look at another UK um, yarn supplier called Along Avec Anna. She's also a knitwear designer, I think. And um, this mohair is supposed to be cruelty free and um, it's 72% fine kid mohair and 28% mulberry silk. So I just thought, on balance, I think this would be a good choice to make something I'm gonna wear, I'm gonna like, and um, overall, I think it's, best option to use everything together to get it looking right and stuff so yeah um so i made two swatches i hope that waffle made sense by the way the first one i did with was with one strand of the silk mohair but i felt like the gauge was too see-through so i did another one with two strands and yeah, to me, this is, feels a lot nicer and a lot more, yeah, just cozy and nice. Um, so I'm going to hold two strands of the silk mohair from along Avic Anna. The colorway is... I'm not sure if this is a colorway or not. It says Chatin. It's in French, so I'm not sure what that means, but this might be, this might be the colorway. Um, I was almost going to order from Miche Bouche, but I just thought it's probably going to take too long for it to arrive with me and I just wanted to start this because um, the Hello Stella yarn was just like looking at me saying, make me into something. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I really like this fabric and I decided to go with this. So I'm going to, I haven't actually cast it on, I've only knit the swatches, but um, I'm pleased with how this turned out and I think it's gonna be really cozy. And yeah, I hope that waffle made sense there. Like, I think about everything that you do, it's all about, um, what am I trying to say? What's it all about? It's not about being perfect, it's just about doing what you can with what you have. That's what I'm trying to say. And I think as well, this colour of the, you can see the difference in the two you now, because I love this colour and I was like, oh, if I put this with it, will it change the colour too much? But I think you get the best of both colours. So I think that's a really nice option. That is my final work in progress. But I would like to talk a little bit about knitting dreams. Knitting dreams. I have ambitions of casting on a pair of fingerless gloves and a pair of colourwork mittens. So I would like to use my used wool yarn that's currently in the shop. It's um, the last base from used wool. Um, I had originally launched this with um, some vinyl that my brother-in-law has just released. It's his new album called Letters. Um, you can read about it. I'll put his name here and you can look it up if you're interested. He's on Spotify. Um, <clears throat> last Gale is this base and Last Glass is this 
base. So this is undyed. This is Scotch Mule and Wes Black Wensley Dale. This is Scotch Mule. Scotch Mule is um, Blue Face Leicester Ram, I think, crossed with a black face. I think, I think that's what it is. I might have got that wrong, but someone will correct me, I'm sure. And I just think there's a lot of really nice colour work, either fingerless mittens or colour color work mittens with fingers that would look so good in this. Um, so a few people have sent me suggestions or patterns that they've written and suggested that it might work with this. I don't really have a pair of fingerless gloves, so I think it would be really good for this really frosty weather. Um, so this is one knitting dream that I have. I do have other knitting dreams. Probably, oh yes, my Harriet's headband. So that is in the pipeline. I would love to make it for this winter. Is that gonna happen? I don't know, because realistically, I only have about one to two hours of knitting in the evenings. Um, if I get a chance, I'll snatch it at different times of the day, but that normally doesn't happen. Um, so I'm interested to know, when do you fit your knitting in? Do you have, do you knit at the same time every day? Do you take your knitting with you? When do you fit it in? Especially I'm interested to know if you have children, when do you fit in the knitting? Um, we've been having a little run of um, up in the evenings, so I'm not always getting my full knitting time in the evenings, which means that progress can be a little bit slow. But I don't mind so much, and I'm really enjoying everything that I'm working on, so, um, I'm always really excited once um, my wee girl goes to bed. I'm always like, giddy giddy, let's get the knit tonight. Um, it has been coupled quite a lot recently with the World Cup, <laughs> which I can't say I'm like super enthusiastic about, but I'll watch it at push. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, oh yeah, forgot to say about this. In the shop, I have mystery bags. Mm. I have mystery shawl sets. I have mystery sock sets and mystery double sock sets for a bold and double like the socks that I showed you. So I am going to be shipping right up until Christmas, after Christmas, but my next proper shop update won't be until the end of January. I'm going to be stocking the shop then with some Hearth DK um, and probably a limited edition base as well. So um, I have mystery, yeah, just a note about the shawl kits if you're interested or if you're in the market for this. The shawl kits are, some of them are the same base, natural sock, some of them are a mix of natural sock and Wednesday deal. And they're three different colours and each one is kind of different. So it's just, I don't even know, I just pick up one and pop it into your order so I don't even know which is which. So it's quite fun, it's like lucky dip. And um, yeah, I have a few of those in the shop right now. And I have some festive yarn, some stitch markers. As I said earlier, I have some ceramics. So if there's anything that takes your fancy, I will be shipping for as long as I can. I think the, the whole, I think international shipping, the last shipping dates have probably gone for Christmas. Um, but I will still be shipping I'll be shipping everything no, it may arrive after Christmas, but I think if you're in the UK, your orders will still arrive by Christmas, hopefully. As some of you may know, there's strikes going on here, so that means there's a delay in the postage. Um, there's only certain days I can actually post um, because of the strikes. Um, so hopefully, hopefully things aren't too delayed. I'm looking into other um, shipping options for next year. Don't know if it'll happen or not, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all well. I hope your knitting's going well. Let me know what you're knitting in the comments. Um, I hope you have a lovely holiday coming up. I hope it's restful and relaxing, filled with knitting. And I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in a few months probably. Oh, and I should probably say here, I have a plan next year to be a little bit more present on YouTube 
and a little bit less present on Instagram. Um, just because I personally enjoy this space more, I think. I'll still be on both platforms, but I just want to hang around here a little bit more. So yeah, hopefully you'll be seeing more of me. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.